And welcome to DEI Matters, Conversations with Margaret Credo Thomas. We took the summer off and we're back for the fall. And I decided to start with my favorite guest, <laughs> Jill Harvey, um, who I work closely with. So, hi Jill. Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, so how have things been going? They are going. They're going. They are going. Yeah. Um, it's been an eventful summer, I'd say, just for the um, diversity, equity, inclusion division within the town. We've got some new employees, some big projects happening. So it wasn't really a slowdown summer. Mm. It was more like a gearing up. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So you're almost three years into your position. And I wanted to know, what do you think some of your wins are? Um, accomplishments in almost three years yeah well right now I'd say the fact that I have a division and employees <laughs> not just <laughs> myself um, is huge mm -hmm. that this role started as a coordinator position mm -hmm. and now there's an outreach and engagement coordinator we now have a full-time ADA coordinator um, so that really says a lot about you know the town valuing the work mm -hmm. and putting the resources and support behind it um, so for me, that's a big win, mm -hmm. like, yes. Um, I think another win is the work that we have going on right now, the equity audit, the community okay. equity audit. Yep. Um, and then we're gonna be starting some um, racial equity workshops for employees. Mm -hmm. And I have made it very clear that this is for every employee. Mm -hmm. So taking that on and getting that logistically organized mm -hmm. um, will be a win, but right. all of the pre-work going into it has been really just wonderful to work with the consultants we're working with um but yeah i think those two things are kind of a big win because other places those are major those are major yeah wins they don't you talk quite about get that <laughs> expand you when i heard what i'm hearing you say is that you have expanded the department of dei mm -hmm. for the town and um and you mentioned that you have an outreach coordinator and then you said an ada so can yes. you tell everybody what ada stands yes. for so the american with disabilities act um, everyone should have a coordinator uh, or have someone, it, it was my job, mm -hmm. <laughs> part of my job, mm -hmm. um, but now we have a full-time person to do that. So what they'll do is make sure um, they'll handle complaints, mm -hmm. compliance, mm -hmm. um, work with other town departments. We mm -hmm. do have a self-evaluation ADA transition and implementation okay. plan mm -hmm. um, that is a massive document that has all of the improvements that need to be made. Um, but we needed someone to really be able to work closely with that document and work closely with departments to make sure that every time we do a project or where there's opportunities for funding, that we're incorporating all of these changes and updates and improvements so that our buildings, our parks are all accessible. That's, uh, that's great. Yeah. So, and then the other win that I hear you, you're, you, that you spoke about is that you have an equity audit going mm -hmm. on in the community and um, we just got finished with our equity audit and got the <laughs> official report um, which I think is going out to everyone today awesome. so um, do you want to share a little bit more about that? Yeah the audit um, so we put the request out for proposals back in I want to say February mm -hmm. um, we had like seven proposals we narrowed it down we mm -hmm. picked one and we've been working with the consultants um, Opportunity Consulting they're out of DC um, since, I want to say, end of May, beginning of June. Mm -hmm. So the summer for them was really a big data collection stage. Part of that is also recognizing there's a lot of data we don't have, mm -hmm. and that in itself is a clear um, recommendation mm -hmm. <laughs> that we need. Mm -hmm. um, we need different avenues of collecting proper data so that we can track um, the progress we're making or the progress we're not making. Mm -hmm. But with the audits, we're moving into a focus group stage, so really having our consultants and facilitators work with community members, doing some of that outreach that has been difficult for us. And mm -hmm. it's, now it's a little bit better with our new outreach coordinator. Mm -hmm. But um, just having open and honest conversations with community members, they're doing one-on-one -on -one interviews as well, mm -hmm. which is really helpful because we're getting to hear from folks that we typically don't folks that are not showing up to public meetings or folks that are not a part of town meeting mm -hmm. that their voices are being heard so mm -hmm. this is a different avenue to really be able to see more of what we've been missing because my favorite phrase is 
we don't know what we don't know. Right. So this audit is really, for me, is going to help us really set the proper goals. Mm -hmm. And it aligns well with the workshops that employees will be going through mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they'll both kind of culminate at the same time. Yeah. Whereas we're, we're seeing this data, we're looking at everything, but then we're doing this learning process together mm -hmm. as a full staff. And mm -hmm. when I say full staff, I mean like all like 400 plus people. Right. Um, and coming up with a joint collaborative plan of how we want to approach this work and what's going to work for us so that it's it's shared. It's not just mm -hmm. Jill's plan. Mm -hmm. It's not just going right. to come from the town manager. Right. That it's everyone contributing to this and mm -hmm. understanding why we're doing it mm -hmm. um, and feeling ownership over it right. so that they do want to start to make the changes that are necessary to better serve all of our community yeah. members. It's really important when you can get everybody to be collectively involved in mm -hmm. making a decision or what's the um, what road that we should be taking. Um, and I think um, congratulations that you've gotten the Thanks. audit done. <laughs> um, that is really huge, right? Mm -hmm. And we, both you and I know that to get an audit done. Um, what do you think are some of the um, challenges that you are still facing? Yeah, um, balance, <laughs> <laughs> life balance, yeah. work balance, yeah. Yeah. Um, because I feel like I said it before, you know, a lot of the, the work you're doing when you're in this type of role or in that field, um, it's, it's also personal. So mm -hmm. whatever else is going on in the world, it's going to hit you different mm -hmm. when you have to deal with it, mm -hmm. but then you have to you have to deal with it with your job. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's forever an ongoing challenge, but being able to have the right network and support and folks you can talk to um, is and a good remedy. No is a word. I, <laughs> oh, I, yes, no is a word. No, no is a word. <laughs> I found that out. And yeah. that you can use it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm starting to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, and and I don't feel sorry about it. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, that work-life balance is really, um, really key. Um, one of the things that I'm noticing, and I'm wondering if you noticed it too, as we are coming out of how you know the pandemic has had us in the last two and a half years, where mm -hmm. we had to wear masks and it was a lot of surveillance testing. Um, and a lot of that has now stopped. Yeah. Um, and I feel that, I, I think for me, I feel that there's just like, just different energy, which is great. I think people are just like really happy that they can go to work without, like with my mask and mm -hmm. things like that. However, I also feel like there's this, um, there's, there's more, um, it feels like there's just more things that are happening all at once. Um, and I'm wondering if you're feeling the same way. And I was just wondering, like, what do, what do you think that is? Yeah, I don't know what it is <laughs> uh, to answer that question. But I definitely agree. I feel like there's this kind of resetting and readjusting mm -hmm. phase, but it hasn't happened the way it normally would. Mm -hmm. Like, when you go through a transition or a change in your life, you kind of have that personal and you prepare and you mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think with what we're all going through in different ways is – some folks have gone immediately just like right back to what mm -hmm. used to be, mm -hmm. but we all know what used to be is not, right. it's not going to be the same. Right, right. Um, and we can't act like it's going to be, we can't think like it's going to be, we mm -hmm. need to adjust and adapt mm -hmm. to, you know, living with that possibility of always having to maybe put on a mask or stay home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. not see people, but mm -hmm. we've, I think... The, I feel like the pandemic taught us something that you should kind of value what you have now mm -hmm. in the present mm -hmm. um, and just take advantage of mm -hmm. what you've got. Right. It, it's interesting because I feel that um, we didn't have space and time to really talk about what did mm -hmm. we learn from the pandemic. And like you said, I think people are just like, oh, you know, 2019, right? Let's just mm -hmm. resume from where 2019 yeah. since we had this two and a half year pause. Yeah. Um, and I think we there was a lot of good things that happened within the pandemic that we learned that there's different ways that work like you said work life balance, there's different ways that we can hold meetings now. Yeah. I'm running late now and I can say, hey, can we hop on a Zoom? Mm -hmm. Right. And um, things like that. And so um, I think that I wish that we had that moment to just kind of pause on that. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, I want to, and I think this is going to start to get us into this conversation where I want to go. And I wanted to ask you um, a question, but I want to kind of wait. There are a lot of states that are banning this work. They're mm-hmm. banning um, diversity, and equity, inclusion, anti-racism work. There are a lot of schools that are just saying that they do not want this curriculum yep. being introduced to students. Um, what are your thoughts? Um, where do you think Massachusetts is in regards to this work? Um, I'm glad we live in Massachusetts. <laughs> I hopefully don't see, you know, the state imposing any type of bans. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's also kind of, I know being in this work and working in municipal government with the state, um, we're not as far ahead as we think we are as well. Mm -hmm. So just because we, you know, think we're liberal and progressive, we still have very deep-rooted racist policies and practices, and that isn't just going to go away. Mm -hmm. Um, That takes the work. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I definitely don't see, you know, curriculum being challenged. No, I take that back. It'll be challenged, Mm -hmm. but I don't see what's happening in other states Mm -hmm. um, with full bands or anything Mm -hmm. um, happening here. But I think it was last year, maybe the year before. Time warp. Um, Don't know when, but I do recall seeing and hearing from some of my colleagues in other towns and cities in the state that folks were showing up to school committee meetings and going off and Mm. it's like it's here Mm -hmm. (laughs) people have those feelings Mm -hmm. it's just a little bit more quiet Mm -hmm. um but it doesn't mean it's not here Mm -hmm. so i think getting ahead of it and again back to that support and Mm -hmm. like if we value these things that we say if we value diversity if we want people to feel like they are a part of their state and mm-hmm. you know they're getting mm-hmm. the education they deserve then you need to like stick to that right. and not allow um folks who are trying to take those things away mm-hmm. to be able to gain more momentum um one of the things that i've been thinking about and as we you just discussed that question and there's a lot of states that are just ban- have banned it mm-hmm. like you cannot you cannot teach it yeah. this is not something that they want and um, one of the things that I'm, I think I'm wondering, I'm, and, I, and I don't know if I'm concerned, I think I am, um, do you feel as though, you know, when the, pandem- when the pandemic was at its heightened state, we saw a lot of racial tension. Mm-hmm. We saw a lot of deaths of um, African-American people, BIPOC people. We saw a lot of Asians, um, just the way they were being treated. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people were just like, there's things that we need to do. There was advocacy that was really happening. There was a lot of professional development for people. And I'm somewhat concerned. I'm, I'm wondering if we are going back. You know, I'm wondering because mm-hmm. now it's not really out there, right? Now yeah. you're not really seeing the pictures or um, it's not really on social media. And, you know, when it's not in front of you, you have a tendency to forget, right? Yeah. So I'm wondering, how do you feel? Do you feel like we are reverting back? Or do you feel like we're really pushing forward? Or do you feel like it's a combination of both? I don't feel like we're going back. Okay. Um, I feel like with the, I want to say the perk, <laughs> maybe a different word, but um, with the pandemic, because everyone was home and you couldn't do anything else all of these issues that have been around for centuries you could not ignore and if you chose to ignore it then okay you just you're never gonna get it and Mm -hmm. accept it Mm -hmm. um and i think with the like reopening and all of that folks who've had the privilege to not have to deal with those issues are right back to where they were Mm. but you're not gonna forget Mm. and I hate to say it, but until you see the next, you know, shooting or the next Mm. serious hate crime Mm. on the news, Mm -hmm. you're going to forget because you're back in your own, Mm -hmm. you know, happy, Mm -hmm. just live in life. Mm -hmm. But other folks who've really made the commitment to doing the work and wanting to be a part of the change, they're still there. (laughs) They're Mm -hmm. doing it quietly. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're we're doing it quietly. Mm -hmm. Towns and cities that are still hiring 
creating these positions, um, they're they're pushing it. They're mm -hmm. still wanting to make sure the work is going to get mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. um, but you're not just you're not seeing it. Mm -hmm. And I think that says a lot because it's it's a trend. Mm -hmm. But I also don't support you know DEI being the buzzwords. Like right. don't just say it if you don't mean it. Right. But if you're still here three years later doing the work with me, okay, yeah. respect, yeah. you get yeah. it, and yeah. you're part of the yeah. the, the greater yeah. um, push to for change. Mm -hmm. um, but really, it's I don't think people forget, unfortunately. But it's just that privilege piece where yeah. you're allowed to go back. Right. The privilege and the power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um. So where do you think, as I you know ask you that question, where do you think we are then? Where are we landing with this work? Where are we landing with diversity, equity, inclusion, and anti-racism? I'm going to add social justice, right? Because mm -hmm. people... All the words. It's, it's like, it's like <laughs> all... I, this, I feel like the alphabets, right? Yeah. Like, our, our titles are now the alphabets. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, they're adding another alphabet. Don't forget al Right. They're, they're adding another <laughs> alphabet, right? And so, so where do you, where do you think we are now that, like I said, we're in, um, we're not in a pandemic. It's not to say mm -hmm. that COVID has run away. Um, it's mm -hmm. just, you know, we're, we're living with it, right? Yeah. And so where are we? Um, I mean, we're, like I said, we're living with it. So who knows what'll happen even mm -hmm. next month. Yeah. Um, but I think with this type of work, I don't wanna say I don't care what you call it, but if you're upholding certain values as you're doing the work, mm -hmm. that's what matters. Mm -hmm. Like. D E I B A J R J mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. You can change the name sixteen times, but if you have the core values of what you're really trying to do mm -hmm. and goals that you're trying to reach, mm -hmm. or not even reach, because equity work to me, it's not gonna be reached in any of our lifetimes. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. the things we really would love to see. Mm -hmm. This is a very long, slow, ongoing process. Mm -hmm. Um but if you have, you know, I think as a town. Arlington has committed to doing the work, even when it gets hard. You know, we have departments that deal with some tough issues and they keep doing it and they're trying to be transparent and being able to just know that it's gonna have a positive impact on someone, mm -hmm. I think is what, at least that's what I kind of go by, mm -hmm. is that I, I do programs, I do this, I do that, mm -hmm. but when I know that it's impacted at least one person positively, um, that it matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I look at that as if you planted a seed in a person, that seed will grow, mm -hmm. and, then, and then whoever um, can glean from that person, that might be multiple people that can glean from that person from that yeah. just one seed that you had planted. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, <laughs> what do you think are some of the joys of doing this work? Um, some of the joys, I'd say like the collaboration. Um, if you're doing it right, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're working with folks mm -hmm. you've never worked before. Mm -hmm. You're always trying to innovate and like mm -hmm. keep things moving. Mm -hmm. But that means bringing in diverse voices, diverse mm -hmm. minds. Mm -hmm. um, so I love, I. For me, that's wonderful because I just I like people mm -hmm. and I like to hear what they have to say, so, whether yeah. I agree or not. Yeah. But I welcome it. Yeah. Um, other joys, yeah, just knowing. I think it was yesterday, or I was talking to someone within the office, so Health and Human Services, and we were. Oh, it was this morning. What am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> It was I, this morning. I know, I know how that feels. You're like, wait, what day is it? <laughs> it was this morning. Um, and we were just talking about the fact that, like, everyone who is in that office, at, like, ultimately, we all enjoy, like, providing that public service. Hmm. And if we didn't, we would not, I would not work yeah, right. for a town yeah. government. <laughs> right. Um, right. But to me, that's the joy, like, knowing mm -hmm. that you're, helping someone mm -hmm. whether mm -hmm. it's one person or 600 you're mm -hmm. still providing something to someone that that matters mm -hmm. um and i think that for me that's what it is it's mm -hmm. like even on the worst day right, <laughs> right. knowing that it might have drained me but mm -hmm. if i helped you mm -hmm. okay we're good <laughs> so what's the op the opposite of that is like what are some of the thorns mm. of doing this work 
I've accepted it, but it still is a thorn knowing that you also can't change minds. Mm. It's up to mm-hmm. the individual. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you can have conversations, you can provide workshops, training, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, if you want, if someone wants to do this work, they will. If mm-hmm. they want to help, they will. Mm-hmm. If they don't want to change their mind, they won't. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's the part because mm-hmm. you just don't have control over right. other people. Right. <laughs> right. Um, and there's a lot of folks, like I said, you know, where it's a great state, but there are a lot of folks that are very content with how yeah. things run and don't want change them. because, it, yeah, it yeah. works for them. Yeah. We've talked about this before, like fear of loss, yep. you know, yep. if others gain a little more to mm-hmm. be more equal, mm-hmm. you're not losing, you're just right. sharing. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a, that's a thorn that's is that still, you, can't, yeah. you can't get everyone on your side all the yeah. time. Yeah, and the traditions, right? They don't want to mm-hmm. lose their tradition, traditions. So you and I work very closely together. I guess yeah. the audience has seen that as we, <laughs> <laughs> we laugh. Um, do do we want to share some things that we're working on yeah. um, together? Some partnerships that we're starting to establish? Yeah. Uh, we you, have, I was going to say, do you want to kick it off? Yeah. I think, <laughs> yeah I think we have one that I'm really excited about that we're um, partnering with um, a, t- a chief flattery mm-hmm. um, to uh, really kind of do those connections with the schools and um, better yeah. relationships with students in the police department. And so we have something in works for that, mm-hmm. right? I think that's that's um, great. Yeah. Um, I know you're in the throes of your equity audit. I just got finished, you know, so we're, yeah. you know, I feel like we're in stage two of like, oh, now, it's, now, it's, now it's going out to the community. <laughs> so mm-hmm. to have those community forums. So I think, um, I think that's where some of our work is intersecting as, mm-hmm. you know, I'm like, here's the audit. <laughs> yep. And um, so we're doing some of that work together. Yeah, because um, ultimately, I mean, yes, you're on the school side, but we're serving the same community. Yeah, exactly. Those parents are community members. Yeah. Those kids are yeah. community members. Yeah. Employees. So yeah. it's all it's all the same yeah. <laughs> at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. Um, doing some work with, we're going to be partnering a little bit more. I know you work with the commissions, and I should mm-hmm. say I'm coming, kind of coming more into that. Yeah. I'm working more with the, some of the commissions on some initiatives. So yeah, we have we, we have a, we have a full plate. You're working Go. on the calendar for the year. Oh yes, the calendar, <laughs> our famous calendar. Um, and we talked about um, just uh, sharing. You know, like this month is heritage. Um, yep. Hispanic um, Heritage Month. Hispanic Heritage Month. yesterday. Mom, yes. And it's a for a month. <laughs> yep. Right? And um, how it was a week by um, when um, London B. Johnson was in and um, Reagan yep. then made it a month. And we celebrate, um, you know, our brothers and sisters and who um, have contributed yeah. to us. So, so, yeah, we have a lot of things <laughs> going on. <laughs> um, did I miss anything? Um, probably, but that's okay. I can't think. <laughs> <laughs> <I can> think. <laughs> so, um, we're starting off the year. Mm-hmm. I always start, and last year I started with you as my first guest, so I yeah. had to continue that. <laughs> I had to continue the tradition and start with you again with my first guest. So, thank you for coming Thanks. on and joining me in these conversations. Um, thank you again for joining us. Um, we will be back. Um, in another couple of weeks with another segment. I'm Margaret Credo Thomas. Thank you.